Welcome back to the channel guys. If you're new around here, my name is Daniel and I make videos sharing my journey through Filipino martial arts. Now I recently met up with an instructor in Rapido Realismo Cali and we ended up doing a little bit of friendly point sparring and talking about how our backgrounds were influencing that particular session. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you the two types of point sparring that I practice and then take you to a conversation that we had during that session. So there are basically two types of point sparring that I personally practice. The first one is a sport-oriented point sparring or the ones that are used in competitions. In point sparring competitions like this, players race to a certain amount of points within a limited time. And a point is awarded when a valid target is hit and that hit is landed first in the given encounter. In other words, it's a first to hit system. Now something that I've been practicing over the past year now is a hit and not get hit system. Shots are only counted when no counter attack is successfully executed after the shot. Now if you're feeling confused, the main difference between the two in competitions or at least in the typical competition format, it doesn't matter how hard or how many times you get hit after you've landed the shot. If your strike is first, you will still get that point. But for the second format, points can be cancelled if a strike is landed against you right after. So your shots in this kind of format has to be clean and unanswered. Personally, I've been enjoying the latter format a little bit more, maybe because it's newer to me, but also I appreciate the more cognitive aspect of this type of format. Sometimes it feels a little bit like a fast-paced chess match, and I just enjoy it overall a little bit more. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I recently met up with an RRK instructor, we did some friendly point sparring, and started talking about how our backgrounds were affecting that particular session. Okay, so we were, we were talking a while ago about how, because we were coming from different backgrounds, so you're more used to sparring hit with by um, not getting hit. hit and not get hit, which is something I've also been playing with. But my background is more of the point system sparring where my only concern is to get the first hit. I don't actually care if I get hit after, at least with the point sparring. So while we were sparring a while ago, we were kind of noting the differences because we were giving it different approaches. And while I've been playing with that sparring format, that's his main sparring format. So I was kind of noticing certain nuances. So what were some of the things you were like bringing up a while ago when you were talking? So the main uh, difference that I was talking about was the uh, he doesn't care if he got hit when if he goes in. So uh, he was trying to hit and not get hit. And he was doing really well with the different shifting angles and stuff like that. But certain moves when he retracted, and then I can just come in. So if he has the stick, he swings, and now I'm going to threaten this hand. So he pulls back, and now I'm coming back in. So I can call this what I, what I call like checking if they're baiting or not. So I'm just going to I'm going to bait basically at their bait. You see, so if they pull back, I hit them. If they don't pull back, I'm using this as a block or parry or use that to get out of the way or directly hit the hand when he's striking. So I, actually, I actually like that you gave that example because if we were doing like a competition sparring and that's the tactic that you would use as you're like threatening my hand I might not actually pull back later. I might just use brute force and just go straight for the head because that way even if he hits me first um, if I can like make the strike as intentional as possible I might get like a split second difference or I might just overshadow this hand yes, strike because right? so for point sparring sometimes the hand strike if it's if a clash looks like this boom boom sometimes this doesn't get seen and i might just use brute force to kind of just get away with it but whereas when we're doing this kind of sparring i was kind of really trying to make sure i wasn't getting hit at all but at the same time he's more used to it so he's like one step ahead of me so i go here he threatens my hand i go whoops but he's already used to that he has a counter attack for that whereas for me that's where I am. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to get hit. Aside from that was uh, overall the in and out. You mostly stayed out. Right? I didn't see a lot of in and out, which is also fine. You can do that as well. But if you want to you know, um, hit more than just the hand, yeah. it will hit the body as well. That's going to be very difficult to do. So basically, most of your targets, if you're staying only largo, which is dulo sedulo in other terms, or long range, is that you're only probably going to hit the hand. And that aspect, and which hand is the smallest target, so it might be harder to hit, especially if they're moving their hands a lot or moving their body or changing angles. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot more difficult to hit. 
So that's fine as well if you're just hand hunting. But because if you hurt their hand, especially if you're not using a padded stick, if you hurt their hand, it's going to be harder for them to hit you or swing because they have a less, uh, less tight grip. So if you're wearing a glove, it's going to be harder to grip. So if you hit the hand and they're wearing a glove, they're going to let go most of the time when they swing. So it's easier to block and easier to counter. So usually at the beginning of the sparring, you aim for the hand, and later on you can go for the head. Or you can mix and match as well. But usually the turn, pass up the bus, go in, and go out. Right? So the longer you are inside, higher chance of you getting hit. Unless you're going to do, you know, the grappling, catch and release, stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been a while since I've had the chance to collaborate with fellow martial artists to put these vlogs together. Let me know if you want to see more of these kinds of videos. And as always, I hope to see you in the next one.